Hello and welcome to one of the first uh, live, not live, sort of demonstration videos that I'm going to do on um, Photoshop. I teach, I'm a computing science lecturer, but some of the units that I teach are actually about graphics. On, on A-level IT I teach graphics, on my National Diploma in Computing I teach graphics, and it's also something that I just like to do. You know, I paint, I draw, I'm drawing all the time. Um, and Photoshop is a great tool for developing artwork. Now a lot of the time I use this, my baby, my iPad. Um, it's absolutely fantastic for doing artwork on. I have this app called Procreate that lets me just make you know, paintings on the move, on the fly. I've got a nice little Wacom stylus and I can use it anywhere. Um, for those of you who follow Tom and his adventures on my night, you have probably seen uh, this, which I did recently on the iPad, and it's got some fantastic tools in it. Um, but if you're going to do something serious, if you want to really take your artwork to the next level, um, you really do need to get into a professional art package like Photoshop, Coral Painter, um, Autodesk, Ske Sketchbook Pro, Art Rage. There's a whole raft of them out there, but they all follow the same basic principles. I mainly use uh, Coral Painter and Photoshop. Okay, so this is going to be a work tutorial. So I'm going to use the version of Photoshop we use at college uh, at the moment. Anyway, we might be getting a nicer version later on. And I'm just going to show you how to do some basic stuff. So let's actually get started instead of me chattering on with myself and waffling to bits. So we will call it Gothic Glass Two. I'm I'm going to kind of recreate a painting I've done before just because it won't take an awful lot of effort on my part um, I don't have to think too much about what I'm actually doing as opposed to just getting on and actually doing it I'm gonna set a re reasonably sized canvas and I'm just setting the resolution at 200 if you're doing a sketch you can actually set the resolution a lot lower for the first few stages just really while you're you're getting your picture developed if you work on a lower resolution it takes less RAM the computer responds quicker you can just faff about and, and draw and sketch then later on as I'll show you in a minute you can up the resolution and actually go in and do a little bit more detail so I think what I'll do just while I'm sketching the rough idea I'm going to take this down to 100 pixels per inch that's not a particularly high resolution and I'm going to set the background color to white it's probably a bad idea for the picture I'm wanting to do I might actually generally have started with black but just to keep it nice and simple for you guys on familiar territory we'll go we'll go with white so I'll click OK. There we go, and there we have screen. Um, that's our canvas that we're going to work on. OK, um, there's my brush pointer. You can see with a with a graphics tablet, I've got a lot of control over exactly where I want this pen to go, and I can sketch like I would do with a pencil, which is a really valuable thing. Oh, sorry, you can also rotate the canvas on this little nice little bamboo uh, tablet. There we go. So, I'm going to go in with the pen tool, which is here, and you can select your brushes here. I'm just going to go with a basic round tipped brush, and I'm going to go with, I'm actually going to slightly, yeah, about six pixels is fine. And then you've got your opacity here, which is how much paint, if you like, it actually lays down on one stroke. So, if I just do a stroke, you know, just doing that sort of a line. I probably want it lower than that. I'm just sketching out, so I want something that's fairly faint grey. To undo in Photoshop, it's not Control Z. Um, on a lot of applications, Control Z is your standard undo. On Photoshop, it's Control Alt Z. Okay, they just like to do things a little bit different because it's Adobe. Right now, the other thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be sketching directly onto the background layer. That is bad. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it, chaps. Okay. You want to take that and you want to put a new layer in there on the side. Now, if my webcam, my webcam probably just hid that, so hang on a second. Just going to slide that over there. It's actually there. New layer. Okay. So now I've got a new layer, layer one. Now I'm going to name that sketching. Okay. And let's see what we can do. Control plus will make the canvas bigger, well not the canvas bigger, it will zoom in and control minus effectively zooms out. 
So, let's see. I will. I've actually got a reference picture up on my other screen. So if I keep glancing up to my left, probably your right, that's what I'm actually doing. But it's just to give me, to remind me what I actually did in my original. So I'm just going to sketch in some basic shapes here. Probably start to see what's happening here in a minute. I'm going to do the head of this character slightly tilted, so I'm just doing this because I want to see exactly where everything's going to live. That's wrong. Split this into three equal. Little cute little button nose will be about here. Mouth will be about there. And the chin is going to come in. I'm not worried too much at the moment if I make a complete amount of kibosh of this, if everything ends up in the wrong place. The beauty of Photoshop is it's dead easy to just start again. That's not too bad. The only thing is, I've got this whole thing out of scale. So what I'm going to do is going to do Control T, which allows me to select the whole thing, and I'm just going to shrink this all down a little bit because I've got my scale completely wrong. There we go. Control T is a really useful tool. Just lets you transform the canvas by transform mathematical transformations. You know, rotate, resize, all that sort of kind of thing. Slightly, Looks slightly wrong there. So what I'm going to do? Take the lasso tool, select around this, and just move that out. In fact, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm actually going to rub out that whole head because I'm not entirely happy with it. It's not pleasing me. I'm not happy. The problem with drawing people with the head on the tilt is that it's not a natural way to see a face and if you're not careful the whole thing goes lopsided. So what I'm going to do instead I'm actually going to draw the face as I want to draw it. And then I'll just rotate it around it using the transform tool. So I sincerely hope the camera did not, the software did not pick up my tummy rumbling rather loudly. Apologies for that if it came out. Say bits and bangs. I know it's saying, What the hell is he doing? Don't worry about it. It will all become clear in a minute. Hopefully. Select around about that. You can get the whole of the picture. There we go. Drop that down. Control T the selection. Is it going to get my selection? Drop that down. Rotate it round. So we've got the tilt of the head and apply that. There we go. That's good. So that's got the shape, and now we're going to have a bow here. Somewhere around here. And then some big old bunches. Right down to the shoulder. There we go. 
guy. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's good. It's good. That shoulder's way too big. Let's pull that right in. So this is all on one layer, all with the paintbrush, low opacity, so I can just sketch away, get my ideas together. Okay, calm down everybody, yes he's drawing the boobies, just calm down. Okay, so I've got a rough sketch outline of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, what I'll probably do, if I was taking this into a painting, I probably wouldn't go much further than that. I would go straight in and start to slap some paint on. But because the idea is that I'm showing you a process here, I'm going to put in a new layer. Call this lines. And what I'm going to now try and do is attempt to clean up these lines a little bit. I'm going to reduce this opacity for this layer. There's the opacity. Just drag that down a little and you'll see that these lines will go a bit fainter. Now, if you'll just excuse me for one moment. The one thing I need when I'm doing that work. A drink. <gasps> was that product placement? I don't think that was product placement. Whoa. That hits the spot. Right, so. Oh, don't rotate my canvas. I didn't want you to do that. There you go. So, on the lines layer. Still with the pen. Okay. Still as off, sorry, with the rounded tip paintbrush. I'm now going to bring this opacity back up again. Not all the way. I want some flexibility in there. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to start to paint in some of these details. Now, at this point, I could actually increase my resolution. Remember I was saying about do your rough lines in a lower resolution? Let's go up to 200. What this will now mean is that every stroke of the pen at 6, still 6 pixels, but now I've obviously got a lot more pixels to play with, so the line will be correspondingly thinner. So if I just come into the nose here, you'll see what I mean. There is my, oops, there's my six pixel, six pixel line, so I can go in and I can just drop that in, and she's got a little bit of a curve there for the nostrils, then we have, now I will actually rotate the canvas round while I put in the smile. Do, 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 do. It makes me smile. It makes me smile. Not worst, I feel bad for a while. Then I just sorry, I will never ever oh never sing again. Right, on um the advantage of using a tablet is it does this when you reverse the pen around, it becomes a rubber. So just like on a pencil, you've got the eraser on the back. If you want to rub something out, you just flip the pen around and it will delete. Let's look. 
working. <gasps> I didn't know he did that. I'm pinching and expanding just like on an iPad and it works. That mouse is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Right, I've got something terribly wrong there. I can see that it's that line there. Now I just want to change the width of my erase because it's too big and chunky. There we go. Right, let's just try and make that a bit better. I'm not actually sure I've got that curve right. It's not too bad. Let's move that around. Okay, so then we've got the ads. Now these are going to be quite, I want to say manga, anime eyes, but it's more in that sort of slightly Tim Burton gothic style that's very common at the moment. Where the eye is very large and round. Now, you know, that's a very common way that, you know, a lot of gothic artwork works that way now. A lot of gothic artwork. Very Tim Burton esque. But I want her eyes to be quite appealing, so I'm going to go quite big. Tidy all this up in a minute. Just trying to get good shape. the bits I don't want. That's not too bad. Oh, that's not too bad. Cut up there. there we go. Right, so hair's going to come down. Fringe coming down here. going to be a distinct area of shine here in this area so I'm just going to indicate that by just sketching in some rough lines these are going to be the where the hair all pulls together for the bunches so it's going to be kind of like that and then she's going to have these cute little bits of hair that sort of come out here. Slightly hide the ears, but not completely. A little ear peeking out there. And then there's going to be another one over on this side, which is going to be slightly bushier. We're going to have the bundle of the bow about there, and that's going to come out. And it's going to be the inner bit like that. Something like that. Again, I'm not worried too much about getting the details right at the moment. I'm just trying to get a really strong idea of where I want everything to be. So that when I actually go in and start painting, I've got really clear guidelines to work from. Something like that. That's looking better. Okay, I wonder. Just wanted to put scroll it using the tablet. Okay, now I've got to get the shape of this jawline right now. This is kind of critical. I'm going to get this right, and it's got a balance. Decide how pointed I want my chin to be, not too pointed. Something like that looks pretty cute. Rather adorable. I love the whole cloth look. Um, in my youth, a long time ago, I had gothic aspirations. I was never brave enough to go full look 
by any stretch. But I like that style of music. Well, I mean, I like all styles of music. We're talking. We were talking the seven, late seventies and eighties here, and there wasn't a lot to hate. Admittedly, a lot of it was fairly twee, sort of rubbish, but good fun music. You've got the Cure, you've got the Smiths, Susie and the Banshees, and you had the slightly weirder bands like Bauhaus. Awesome. Now I'm going to do this little heart just to be different. I think I'm going to give it that works. Everything is Batman. Oh, you've got to do the voice, really. Because I'm Batman. Let me tell you why. Coming on pretty nice. Let's get in there. So, going in, I just want to sort of work out roughly where these bunches are going to live. Again, not too worried about getting the details 100%. I'm just more looking to get a general impression of the shapes and the positions. Some weird effects over on that side, which I'm not liking. Almost down to the shoulder. And again, there's going to be an area of light. Come in here. And there'll be another one. In there. So, white. Well, not white, but lighter, lighter. Right. Now at this point, I can take away my original sketch lines and see what I've got. That's not too bad. Let's do. Let's figure out where we can have a something in there. I'm not quite sure. Yet. Like a. It's all could do. Oh, I know. Something that we sometimes see is sort of those upper arm, the long gloves. I could put one of those there. Maybe unless he's got a tattoo. Oh, he could do. Why not? Let's go. Egyptian ink, maybe. Because she's a Gotham, just to have a pencil in there. Something like that. Okay. So, those eyes look weird. Let's actually show you what I intend to do with those eyes whilst we're here before I finish. Coming up on 25 minutes, so I need to finish now anyway. Um, so, let's just get she in really big pupils. Black. 
just give you a rough idea. I will probably want to fix things. There's things I don't like. I've got a mistake around there with that chin. It needs to be more like that. Still not happy with the mouth. I need to extend that out there. More like that. And I want to make that nose a lot more cute and cuddly. In fact, that nose is all wrong. Let's do that again. Just try and squeeze this in. Quick, quick, quick. Running out of time. Just drop that in there. Control T that. Move it over slightly, but it more central. Right, so a lot of cleaning up to do, a lot of tidying up, but that's not a million miles away from what I was after. Might even possibly make those eyes bigger. You can see they're not actually quite the same size, but I can fix that. They need to come in a little bit more. But yeah, that'll do. Right, so stopping there. Um, that's the first part. So just we've used layers, mainly the pen tool, eraser, a little bit of transformations, um, Zooming in and zooming out, control plus, control minus, a few other bits and bobs. That will do for now. So I'll wrap up at this stage and then I'll carry on with this picture at another point and do another one. Okay.